Hi, John Valvano here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started on Lab 6. The steps are to start with a solution to Lab 3 or 5 and paste it into the starter code. Um, and then we're going to connect things up. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So I'm going to go over to PCB Artist and I'm going to open three files. I'm going to open my lab 3 solution and I'm going to open the SCH and PCB for the lab 6 and 7 starter file. Okay. Alright, so I got three files are open. I'm going to start in my solution to lab 6 and copy this, the actual circuit solution. And I'm, before I copy, I'm going to delete some stuff I don't need. I don't need that comment. I don't need these ports. It turns out the LCD is already in the starter code, so I won't take it. Uh, I don't need this one there. I don't need this one there. So I just have the solution to lab 3. Now I'm not going to save this change because I want to keep it uh, in case I mess up. But now I'm going to copy. This is my solution to lab 3. So I'm going to do a copy. And I'm going to go over to the SCH uh, for lab, the SCH uh, for the starter code for lab 6 and 7, and paste in my solution. Now, this is an important step where I have to decide whether to merge the nets. I want all the grounds connected. Uh, PE0 is only used for one thing, and that's a switch. PE1, again, I'm going to merge the nets of these, uh, of these signals. So plus 3.3 .3 is plus 3.3 .3. and now I'm, the trick here is to line this up so that they're horizontally balanced with the other chip okay you see that right there click all right uh, now I'm gonna zoom in right here I'm gonna zoom in right here and and connect the port E of the booster pack which has my solution to the port E of the single chip. And now in order to see which one's which, I'm going to grab one and move it to the right or left. Okay? So I can see which one's which here. Uh, that one's the single chip, so I'm going to move it right this way. All right, so it's still lined up uh, horizontally, uh, but it's off a little bit vertical. Okay? See that? And now my, uh, my goal here is to wire up uh, the two versions of port E, so they're on the same circuit. Okay, so I'm going to connect PE0 to PE0. I'm going to connect PE1 to PE1. Connect PE2 to PE2. I'm going to connect PE3 to PE3. I'm going to connect PE4 to PE4. Okay, so now, now that my single chip port E is connected up to my circuit, I'm going to delete the booster pack version of port E. Delete. Okay. Now I didn't use PE5. One of the things I like to do is to show the net names, to display the net name so I can see uh, what the computer's thinking. These are, that's PE1, here's PE2, here's PE3, and here's PE4. Again, I didn't use PE5. Okay, so I connected up port E. Now I gotta go find port D. Okay. Where is it? There's port D right here. So I'm going to grab it. Come here, port D. Come here. And again, I'm going to move it up so it's lined up horizontally with the other port. And tie port D, 0 to port D. There we go. And now that that's connected, I'm going to delete the booster pack version. Now you notice they're different sizes. Uh, that's okay because uh, the chip has all eight and the booster pack only had six. So I'm going to delete the booster pack version of the connection. All right. Uh, so now I've connected my lab six into the starter code. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is do a save as and I'm going to save as this starter code. I'm going to give this a name. Um, lab six video. One, right? And it turns out I need two files, both with the same name. So I'm going to go over here to the other one, to the PCB, do a save as here as well. 
All right. So now Lab 6 Video PCB and Lab 6 um, SEH are now uh, linked because they have the same name. Uh, like I said, I'm going to close this window without saving so I could start over and, and, and do it again. All right. So um, it's important if you've used the library uh, to make sure you've updated the uh, update the components. Okay. Uh, to make sure that the that the system is using the exact same library components, uh, I've already done that, so this did not need any update. I'll do the same thing over in the PCB. I will update the library to make sure um, that all of the SCH and all the PCB components are up to date. All right, so I do that first. Uh, you will see that there are portions of this uh, interface that are already done for you. Uh, I'm going to use a, a battery-powered 3.3 volt lithium-ion battery through the LP2950 regulator. That will give me about up to 100 milliamps of current uh, at 3.3 volts. Uh, these are test points which we're going to use for debugging and we'll, and so and look further down down here is the debugging interface this is how we're going to uh, program it when we get to lab 11 through these uh, five pins and then these are the power and ground and reset circuits um, to uh, to out activate the chip and there's the crystal uh, it's got an external 16 megahertz crystal uh, drive in the clock okay. all right so those uh, leave them alone uh, we're gonna wire them up but don't uh, don't change that uh, the display like I said is already connected and so again we're gonna wire that up uh, let me put my name on here okay lab six Okay, so put your name on there, put the date on there, uh, etc. So you can get credit. All right, so now the, the next thing to do is to take all the changes uh, and transfer it. But I noticed something weird. Uh, look over here. Uh, that's a bad net name. Okay, so that should have been PD0. So let me change this net name. Change net name to PD0. Uh, let's change this one. This is like uh, Q1 base. That'll be a good name for that. So another one. We can't have any nets. Oh, there's a there's an interesting bug. This would have been a bug if I didn't fix it. Notice that this signal right here looks like ground, but it's not. It's actually some weird net. So we got to make it ground. Very important that all the grounds actually be ground. All right. Uh, this is why we do it. Okay, that one. It would have worked if I'd left it that name, but. Uh, we don't do that, so we're going to call it something. Speaker minus. All right. All right. So I look over here and I don't see any weird names, but I do see something bad. Look at this net. Uh, that's 3.3 volts. Look at this one. That's the other 3.3. I promise you, that's not right. So uh, this guy right here is not a good name. We want that to be actually 3.3 volts. So we're going to change this net so that it is the same so all the 3.3 volt signals actually have the same net name in this case 3.3 and I do want to merge them yeah I don't want two 3.3s I want one all right there we go all right so what else are we going to do before we go forward let's figure out how we're going to debug okay now there's um, there's two ways that we can debug uh, for instance if um, um, if um, would like to put my oscilloscope on this signal what I can do is take a test point and there are two test points in the library one is a um, one is called big and big is actually just going to be two holes you put us you put a wire soldered in those two holes and you can clip things to it and then there's the single uh, in uh, inline package uh, which is going to be a cute 29 cent uh, uh, circle with a color on it so that's the pretty one so let's add it okay. 
So I might want to see the square wave associated with the, with the output. So I'm going to hook it up to a pin. Uh, let's give it a name that's better than test point. Oops. Let's give it a name. Let's call it opponent. Let's call it PD0. Okay, so I'll know what it's called. All right, so what else can we do? We can uh, hook things up to the logic analyzer. So, for instance, if I want to connect this pin to the logic analyzer, I can bring it out right there. Okay, let's give it a name. That's going to be PD1. You notice that it's pink. That's because it's not connected to anything. All right? There's PD1. It's just a pin that's unused, and I'm going to go down to my logic analyzer. And I'm going to connect up pins to my logic analyzer. Right. And so I'm going to do two, but you can do three, four, five. I don't care. You're going to have at least some. The more pins, it'll be easier to debug. So uh, to connect up that, I'm going to make it the same net name. And make that one PD0. And notice when I change the net name, it'll... Um, this will make PD1. So PD1 has no purpose other than going to the logic analyzer. Okay. All right. Let me show you one more debugging uh, tip, and that is, uh, what if I'm going to make a mistake? Yeah, I might just do it. So I'm going to take a couple of pins. Again, I'm going to show you only one of them. I'm going to take a couple of pins and just connect it to a to a test point. Um, they have no purpose other than debugging or fixing mistakes. So if it's hooked up to a test point, uh, then I can um, I can fix it. Okay, test point. Let's hook it up to a small one right here, and let's hook it up. There we go. And let's give it, that's going to be PD2. So again, I'm just going to connect this up to a test point. Okay, go. That's going to be PD2. Now, PD2 doesn't go anywhere other than to this test point. And since it's now connected, it's happy. All right. So PD1 went to the logic analyzer, PD2 went to a test point. Both used only for debugging. All right. Now we'll have the JTAG debugger, okay? But we have the two ways that we can debug. All right. Let's uh, do a save and do a forward design change. Okay, forward design change. All right. What this does is move all of the things that I have done uh, to my SCH and move them onto my PCB. Okay. Those are all the connections there. And you go, where did they go? There they are in the corner. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, is before I place it, I'm going to move them up so I can see them. Right there. And I'm zooming in. All right. All right. Now this comes the fun part. This is the fun part. Now this is the both the hardest and funnest part of doing the design. And that is to place things onto the printed circuit board. You can see that I placed the processor, the crystal, the caps, and the debugging, and the, and the uh, LCD already there. Now you can move the LCD if you want. You can move the debugging terminal, but please don't move the relative locations of the processor, the crystal, the, and the capacitors. Okay? Now if you want to move it around, uh, move all, all, all chunked of that. Move it all at once, uh, because we know that works. And that way, when we get to lab eleven, your stuff will work. All right. So let's uh, um, notice that uh, this is the bottom of the display, and the display is actually on the other side of the board the, from the processor. And this will be the up side or the top of the display. And so I'm going to put my buttons below the display. So I'm going to move my buttons. Okay. Over here, I need some space. You see that? They don't fit. So that's okay. I'll just make this bigger. So I'll grab onto the size of the board. That's the board. And I'll just move, make myself some space here. There, now I got room. Now I got room. Okay, move this guy out of the way here temporarily. So I'm going to put down my buttons here. One, 
I don't care. You're going to decide what order to put them in. I'm just going to put them here. Two. So the buttons are going to be on the bottom of the board. This guy here is going to be centered. Four, five. Okay, now this, these yellow lines are what's called a rat's nest. Okay, And if you wanted to redraw the rat's nest at any time, uh, this represents all the signals that are yet to be connected. The yellow line means a to-do list. And if you wanted to redraw the rat's nest, what you can do is you can do a design rule check uh, without the nets selected. Okay, so I'm going to do a design rule check and no errors were found, but, but the consequence of that is it redrew those rat's nest. All right. And the trick is to make it look and feel uh, the way it should. Okay. Uh, and so if I grab this resistor right here and I get it close, I can sort of see where it's going. You see, it's supposed to be connected right there. So I'll move in and put it right there, right next to it. Okay. All right. There's a resistor. Where does this one go? I'll move this guy. See, it's connected to that one, so I'll move them here. Where does this guy go? There, that one. I can either put it up here or down there. Oh, I don't know. I don't care. Okay, I'll put it here see what happens. Okay, now, I don't want to overlap it with a hole. That's a hole that I'm going to use to, 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 to screw the board onto the box. Okay, there you go. He's down there. One more of these. All right, that's there. I can put it up there. I can put it down here. All right. Uh, all right, so now I got the switches and the resistors in place for the switches. So now let's uh, build the powertrain. Um, this guy right here, let's zoom in. This guy right here is the powertrain. This is where the battery comes in. So I'm going to move them over here. Uh, if I zoom, uh, this is where I'll connect the battery up. If I zoom in, I can see that's the battery terminal. And so I left my little plus sign over here. So let's move the plus sign. And there's my minus sign. Down over there. Okay, so this, um, these silk screens here will help me plug it in when it's time to plug it in. The minus sign, the minus sign. All right. If I look at the powertrain, the next thing that I might need is the is the is the um, test point for the battery. Okay. Uh, there's the silk screen. I won't be able to see it, so I'll move that down there. Okay, so I'll need a cap. I think that's C1. Yep, there we go. C1. You'd see you know, see this see those two yellow lines right here that are crossed? Uh, that's bad. It's gonna be easier if I flip this guy around. And now the yellow lines aren't crossed. You see that? That's the trick of this, of this uh, placement, is I want to reduce. You see that guy? You see the, all the crossing? Watch what happens when I flip it. Ah, no more crossing. Easy to do. All right, now I left this guy upside down, so I better move I'm going to rotate the display. That's not that way. Okay. All right. Uh, next is C2. Again, it's uh, got some crossing, so I'll flip it around. Rotate 270. Now you can see I've got a nice smooth trail uh, to build up the to build up the powertrain. Uh, boy, I'm going to need the the display, and that's going to be my 3.3. I'll put that under there. All right. There we go. So I got the power up. Uh, where do we want the reset button? Well, can I squeeze it in there? Probably. Let's put the reset button here. That'll fit. Sure. Or I can put it over there. I don't know. This is the fun part. Oops. See? This is the fun part. Okay, I look to see if they're crossed. Nope, they're not crossed. You see how that's nicely done? Right in there like that. All right. Uh, this is a... This is... Uh, silk screen on the bottom of the board. So it turns out uh, you can put the reset button actually on either side of the board. And I'm going to put it on the bottom side and I'm going to leave this guy right here so I can see it. All right. All right. Gee, uh, my name. I'm, basically, I put this, I, the first step I do is I put down the, I put down the uh, parts 
uh, then I'm going to route it. And the last thing I do is where to put the silk screen. Okay, so I should probably put off the silk screen till later. Okay, so there's the powertrain and the reset. Let's see what else we got. Uh, logic analyzer. Okay, I'm, I'm going to wait on that one. Let's see. Let's about. Let's do. Uh, let's do. Uh, there's the. There is the. Let's do the the audio. Okay, so this is the speaker connector. All right, so let's rotate it around. Okay, yeah, let's rotate it so plus is up. Okay, so I put the speaker down, the plus is up. Um, that's my speaker. Uh, I know that the speaker is driven by a, 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 an amplifier. Okay, you see that? It's going right in there. This nice yellow line will be easy to trace. Uh, I'm going to need a resistor. Uh-oh. Look at the size of that resistor. That's too big. That's the wrong resistor. All right, so I'll do a save. I'm going to go back and make that a quarter watt. That's a quarter watt. I need eighth watt. So let's go back to the to the SCH. This resistor looks like the right one, but it isn't the right one. So I'm going to click on it, do a properties, and you see it's a quarter watt resistor. I want to make it an eighth watt resistor. All right, so I'm going to make it an eighth watt resistor. Now it looks the same here. It's still a um, a 10k resistor, but I want to um, I want to uh, forward design change that forward design change okay so change the value you can if you look at it you see it's now nice and little uh, but it's backwards you see that this guy's connected there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate it all right so you see that see how that pretty how pretty that is now all right T. all right so I um, I've got a test point for it where are you this one yeah right there all right, and then I have this. Um, now, if you want to squeeze it over, you can squeeze it over, make some space. Now, the trick of the layout is to have as little, has as short of uh, as short of, of of traces as possible. Okay? So I got plenty of room here for my logic analyzer. Now it turns out that if you put in a right angle header, uh, it's going to go in this direction. If you have a straight up, then it doesn't matter. But okay, it's my label, and I've got my PE2, which can go. So I'll put that somewhere in here. That'll be fine. All right. Uh, ground. Okay. R3. Where's? Oh, there's my power. Okay. So I need an LED light. I don't know. I'll put it here. Here in the middle. Sure. It's got a label, and again, I put the LED. I put the label on both sides, and now if I, you see how this guy is crooked. You see how the the yellow lines are crossed, so I'm going to rotate it. So the yellow lines are crossed. All right, hey. All right, that goes to there, that goes to there. All right, so what have I left off? I got the ground. Let's move them. Yeah, that's a good spot. The ground. All right. Uh, all right, see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now it's important to visualize what's on the top and what's on the bottom. It turns out the LCD is on the the LCD is going to be on the um, uh, okay. See how guys, see how those guys are crossed. So I'm gonna move this down a little bit. So they're not crossed. There we go. See how they're not crossed anymore. All right. So I'm gonna put this guy over here. Logic analyzer. Uh, put my name on there. All right. I'm gonna do the silk screen later. Uh, once I've minimize the amount of yellow that I've got okay I'm gonna start tracing I'm gonna start doing the tracing okay? and now uh, you don't get to use uh, auto auto routing okay um, you don't get to you have to hand route it but again you're gonna save yourself a lot of time by spending time during the placement phase okay? Um, now there are two decisions to make. It should it be on the top or the bottom, and how big should it be? And so this is a power line, so I'm going to make it. I'm push the S button, and I'm going to make it power nominal. That'll be 20 mils. Okay. 
Okay, so that's a big trace. And it's on the wrong side. Uh, basically, what I'm going to do is that when I'm going left to right, I'm going to go on the top. When I am go uh, top to bottom, I'm going to go up and down. I'm going to go on the bottom. So I'm going to change this layer to the bottom, to the top, I mean. So it'll be on the top, red. Okay, keep going here. Uh, yeah, there we go, red. Right. Okay, so it turns out that's all for the battery trace. Okay, so I'm going to do my power first. So let's go three volts. Okay, so I want to... I want this to be on the top 20 mil trace. Okay. All right, so now, now comes an important uh, decision. And that is, if I click on the trace, it'll show me all the places that have to, all the places that have to be 3.3. And in particular, you see this, this is the 3.3 into the processor. So I want a nice big trace to that spot. So I'm going to go back over here. Nice big trace to that spot. There's another one there. I could get there potentially. I want the ground to go this way. I can get there. I can... I can get to that trace. Let me put the power into there, too. Now, you see I've got this um, ground trace that has to go there, but i got another. I can go underneath. All right. Uh, so what I'm going to do is do all the power lines. So let's go around. I, there's a spot. So, again, one of the things you can do is go around the outside with the power trace. Okay, I can make it prettier, but I'm going on speed here. Okay, so I got to power up the, I got to power up the, um, uh, the, the LCD, and so I'm going to get yeah, pretty close here. I'm just going to go in and like this. Okay, so that LCD is now powered. I'm going to uh, power this one up. I want to get in there. Do I want to go above or below? Uh, above, I guess, so I'm going to move that guy around. That guy's in my way. I'm going to move him down here. So I get a nice trace, nice clean trace here with my power line. All right, power line. All right, all right, see where else is, where else is green? I got to get power over here. Yeah, I'm all right, there, but I can go this way or that way. I don't know, just keep going. Okay. Now again, uh, uh, these two have to trace. I'm going to put one on the top, one on the bottom. I guess it doesn't really matter which one I choose. Put that one on the top. All right. So if I click, you can see this guy is green, but you can see it's connected up through the chip. Um, this guy is green. It's connected up through the chip, and so my 3.3 is uh, is completely done. All right, so um, I strongly discourage you using ground pores if this is your first uh, this is your first LCD. Ground will probably be the hardest one to do, so let me do that one next. Uh, okay, so let's do some ground again. I want a nice big ground, 20 mil trace on my ground if I can get with it. All right, now you see this guy is, uh, I don't want to cross those two red lines, so I'm going to go on the bottom trace, so I'm going to hit layer, L. Hit put that one on the bottom. All right, and come back up on the top. That's the ground trace. So I'm going to come back up on the top. Go here. Now, what I do is I basically um, try to 
put as much as I can on the top and then go to the bottom when I have to. All right, so now the trick is I need a big ground trace into the processor. And there's a ground pin right there. And there's a ground right here. And so I'm going to come in um, uh, from here or there. Let's come in from here. But I need to be on the bottom. And I'm going to come in right like that. Let's zoom in here and hit that trace. You see that nice big ground trace into the processor. Okay. Do you see that? All right, I got some more ground over here, so I got to keep going. Uh, there is a rule that if you are crossing two paths, if I cross them on the, uh, if I cross them on the, at right angles, uh, it'll be easier to, easier to fix. If I put a, a top and bottom trace parallel, you basically made a barrier. All right, so I need to connect this guy. All right, so I need to go over there. All right, that'll be easy. I'll go here. All right, so I'll go down to that one. Again, I can cross the top and bottom as long as there are ones on the top and ones on the bottom. So I connect. These are all the logic analyzer pins. Now, one of the things you don't want to do is make circles. Circles pretty much are a bad idea. Uh, now, that's a left or right. I might go on the top on that one. All right, let's go on the top layer and put that on the top because I'm going left or right. That's my rule, remember? Left or right goes red. All right, see, so I need to ground into there. I need ground into here. Here's a ground. Okay. And again, this guy probably doesn't matter whether he's top or bottom because. All right. All right. Okay. Ground. Ground. These guys to be ground. Okay. Here's a ground. Sure. All right. Okay. Straight path into there. All right, so now I'm looking for unconnected uh, green wires. Oh, that one. So, see, I got to cross that one, so I'm going to go on the other side. Layer on the bottom. All right, so I could cross. That's gonna, oops, I missed it. Oops, I missed it. Uh, 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 let's see. I made a mess. That's a via. I didn't need a via. Okay, so let's try that again. From here. All right, I want the bottom layer. Oops, I'm already on the bottom. Okay. Bottom layer. There we go. All right. That was, I don't need a via. All right, so that's the ground. Now, if I make a mistake, it'll let me know when I do a design rule check. Uh, so, matter of fact, let's do that. Let's see if I missed any powers or grounds. So, I'm going to do a design rule check. Uh, I'm going to save it because I, I don't want it to crash. Save. All right, so save. So I'm going to do a design rule check now with the um, with the nets included. Now I'm going to get a lot of errors because I'm not done, but I'm specifically going to look for gaps in net on the ground pins, right? Nope. See, no ground or or battery or uh, plus three errors. Uh, in order to get rid of all those purple lines, which are annoying, I'm going to do another design rule check without the nets. Okay. And it'll all go back to pretty yellow lines. Again, the yellow lines are to my to-do list. And now I'm working on signals. Okay. Uh, let's try the reset line. Okay. Where's the reset line? Right there. All right. So I got to get from there to there. That looks like a straight shot if I get on the top, right? So there's my reset line. Okay, now it turns out when I get into the processor, I have to use an 8 mil trace. This is a this is a big trace. I can't do so I gotta change the size. I'm gonna push an S and change the size to signal minimal 8 mil. Right? And there then it won't give me an error. Right? I can go across this guy. Where I'm trying to go is right there. Okay, and there's my reset. There. 
All right. So I've connected up the reset pin. Uh, okay. Speaker. That's an easy one. You know, I like the easy ones. Okay. Base. You see how easy this is if you uh, if you if you work at it. Uh, let's see. PD zero. Well, it's a little bit harder, but not too hard. Okay. I'm gonna go out of here. Okay. But I gotta change the size. S to minimal. Now I have to touch this on the top because it's a surface mount part. But I can go this way. Yeah, this one go there, there. All right. Now it's also connected to the logic analyzer there. Now you notice I'm gonna be I'm gonna drive a a a I gotta go on the bottom so I get away from that one. So I'm gonna go layer to the bottom. No, I, I want to add a corner. Click. Okay, now this is an actual blockage, but it's blocking outside the board, right? So that's not too bad a problem, I think. I don't know. I put it down. Okay, so let's do PE1. So now I got to get to that spot. All right, so I got to go around this guy. So let's move him over here out of the way. Right. I'm going to go around him. And in there, okay. I could go down the middle. I can go this way on the top. Yeah, I'll go that way on the top. I'll just stay on the top. There we go. Okay, so layer. Okay, so I'm I'm sort of planning out where I'm going. So I'm going to change the size to eight mils. I'm going to go along this guy. Line them up nice and pretty. I'm going to go around this guy. Go between here. There's plenty of room. Go right between the middle. Da da. Made it. All right. I got. Let's do PD two. All right. Another easy one. Going to come out of here with a small trace. Zoom in. What's it doing? There we go. I'm gonna, where am I going? Going to line them up. There we go. Enter PD2. Again, PD2 is just, well, let's say I make a mess. I can, I can hotwire a jumper right here to PD2 and connect it up to some other signal. Okay? Or I can use it as a debugging and hook it up to the logic analyzer or to the oscilloscope. I can, I can just use that for future things. So basically what you're going to do is find a bunch of things you don't need and hook them up, hook a couple up to a hole so I can fix it later. Let's do the debugger. Uh, PC3 right there. All right, PC3. Again, I got to change the size. Okay, I'm going right there. PC1, change the size. Going right here. PC size. Going right here. One more. PC, change the size. Going right there. So I got the debugger. All right, what's left? I got uh, wake. There's one. That's an easy one. Come out of here. Again, I'm changing the size to to minimal. Uh, let's see. I got reset, base, power LED. Nope, that's an easy one. Um, all right, so now I got some hard ones. Uh, and that is the display. Now, I've got... I basically want to think about it here. I got one, two, let's zoom in and see what we're, let me zoom in here and see what we're up to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven signals I got to get in there. I don't know if I can get them all that way, so I'm going to put some of them the other way. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I got to get across these two, so I got to go down. So let's start with PA7. I'm going to come out of here with a small via, a small signal, 8 mils. And now to create a via, I am going to see where I'm going to move it a little bit away from the hole right there. Okay. And then I'm going to click here. And now when I go this way, I'm going to hit L, put it on the bottom, and add it a via. See that? I'm on the bottom. So I got a straight shot into this spot. Ta da. P day 7. All right. Now maybe I can get all the rest of them there. Let's try it. 
Okay, so I'm going to see I'm just going around the loop there. All right, let's try it. See if I can do it. S, small size. Okay, so I'm going to leave myself plenty of room. Now, those might be too close. It'll give me an error. All right. Okay, PA5. All right. Okay, that was a weird one. Okay, so S to make it small. Okay. All right. Now that one I'm going to have to cross over to get in there, but that's all right. I'll put it around. Okay. PA4. All right. I'm going to go down there. S. PA3. Ugh. I, I got to cross. I got to cross these two to get there. So I can either cross here or I can cross there. I don't know. Okay, S. Okay, S changes the style. Okay, so I'm going to go around the outside. Okay, Z. I don't like that. Z. Okay, escape. Try again. Okay. S. I want this to closer. I can make space. All right, so now I want to go over. So I'm going to make a via right there. Change the layer. And see, I'm going to go in like this. I got to get to that one, so I'm going to change the layer again. Again, the rule is if I'm going sideways, I'm going to go red. If I'm going up and down, I'm going to go blue because I still got to get to that, those two. So I still have to go up past those two. All right. Um, sometimes I'll make space. I don't know. I can move. I can either go the other. I can't tell. Right. I'm going to PA2. There. All right, you see where I'm going with that one right there? Again, I gotta get past this guy layer bottom. Now I don't have any other I don't have any other traces, so I'm fine. Now I got one more PA zero. And okay, so I can yeah, I'm going to have to come up this track. I can either make the via here, or I can make it down there. I'll make it here and go that way. All right. All right. S for small. All right. Okay, so I'm right here. I'm going to change the layer. And then there's hundreds of good answers. It's just... Uh, all right. So let's, uh, let's check it. Okay. So basically what I'm going to do is just to look at to see if I've missed any. Uh, we already did those. Um, the low voltage dropout, that's actually already done in the starter code. That'll be 2.5 volts when it, when it runs. The crystal is already connected. Okay, again, I don't want you to move those around. But PA0 is connected. PA1 is connected. 2 is connected. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... Okay, PC0, 1, 2, 3, PD0, again, I've connected them all up, PD1, PD2, oh, I left some, oops, I got some E's to do, all right, I forgot the E's, all right, so, I got a little bit of thinking, let's see where all my E's are, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, 4 is way over there, I don't know, I'm going to make go around for that one. Okay, so let me do PE0 next. All right, so I'm going to come out of here. I need to get four signals through this hole. All right, so I'm going to zoom in and get four signals through that hole. I probably can do it. All right, so I'm going to come out of here. So I need to get close to this guy so I, there's room. So I can either go between the cap or I can go to the bottom. Oh, I know what I'll do. Let's, uh, let's, I can stop there just for a second. Stop. All right. I'm going to undo that. Let's move this one to the bottom right there so I can get by it. I know it violates my rule, but I need to get four lines through there. So I'll move that one to the bottom so I can get through that hole right there. Okay. What was I talking? Okay. Back to my traces. Okay, small. 
Alright, oops. Oh. Alright. Alright, where am I going again? Now, if I'm going to roll the bar, I can see where I'm going. See, I'm on the top. That's fine. I got a straight shot to where I'm going. Yeah. Duh. Alright, there's one. Alright, let's try another one. PE1. Yeah, it's the next one. It's got to go down there. Now I got to go around. Sure, I just go under it. Okay, there we go. Alright. Again, I got to get four through here. But where am I going? I'm going there. If I go around here. Yeah, I'm on the top, remember? I'm on the top, so I can go around there. Now, if you if you uh, hook the wrong thing up, it'll give you an error. Okay, PE2. I got two more. But that one I got to get all the way over there. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll go across this way. Right? Go across this way. And then I can get up there from the bottom. Right? I get to there. All right, so let's see. These guys are parallel. So it's going to be hard to cross there. Because right here is a parallel. So I don't like that one. So let's move it. I'm going to move it. Click, click it. Delete it. Alright, so now I'm going to connect it up over here. Oops. That was right. See. The bottom one. Right here, this one. Okay, layer on the bottom. That'll give me room to put a via in. I gotta, I gotta go over this one and under that one, or under that one and over this one. Okay, so. All right. Small. Okay, so I can go by here. All right, so I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna click. I'm gonna go down to the bottom. And now I'm gonna go back to the top. So I can get over that one. That's probably a quicker way. So now where am I going? There. So I can, I'm on the top. So I'll go across this guy. But now I'm going to go on the bottom. Now. And I'm there. There we go. Did it. Alright. PE3. Alright. So now i got to do the same sort of thing. Okay, if I can get past there or not, I could go this way. Sure, I got a spot there. I'll just go this way. Yes. Well, okay, I'm gonna gonna make my via here. Okay. So, where am I going? There. So I gotta go. Yeah, go across here. Right there, layer to the bottom. I'm in. Ta -da. All right, one more PE4. Now I got to either go around to the right or around to the left. If I can go around, I'm going to go around to the left. It was left. Okay, so it does. I could go either way. Oh man. All right, so I come out of here. Small. Now, to get across those guys, I'm going to go to the other layer. So I'm on the bottom now. I went across this one. I'm going to go across all of these. Now, I just, that's the roll bar. So I can see where I'm going here. PE4. Where am I going? I'm trying to get way up there. Okay. So I'm on the bottom. Oh, yes. See you, John. Okay, so. I'm on the bottom. Yeah, getting there. Sure, we're good. We'll go this way. On there. On there. Getting close. Now I go to the top. Yeah, I'm there. Ta da. All right. Ta da. All right, so let's. See what else we got. Now, if we think you're close, uh, there's one. I knew that one. Uh, if you think you're close, go ahead and do a design rule check. 
Sure, that'll let you know. Uh, again, I like to save it in case it crashes. Design rule check. Okay, now I'm going to check the nets. Dangling's bad. Okay, so there we go. Oh, I forgot one. Reset. Not too bad. It'll show me where it is. Um, I can either uh, look at the errors here. Right? And that's an easy one. Okay, fix it. I just forgot that one. Or I can just look for the non-connecting. Okay, so there we are. Da -da -da. Design will check. I win. Done. Okay. Last step is to make it look pretty. Um, is going to put my name on here. It's a silk screen. I'll put my name. Uh, this is 445L. Uh, when we get to lab, um, when we get to lab uh, seven, you'll get a number. This doesn't matter here in lab six, but that'll be the board number when we produce it. Uh, this happens to be a combination of labs uh, three and six. So I'll label it. Okay, um, I can use the the silk screen to to label things if I want I can look at just the silk screen remove the copper uh, remove the copper remove the copper oops no, no. and so look at just the top silk screen that's what it's going to look like um, and make it look pretty, make sure everything's right side up, everything's lined up in the right direction. Um, it's easy to label, right? I could, you know, if you want to make things prettier, you can do that uh, at this stage, okay? Not a big deal here for lab, uh, um, not a big deal here for lab six, but real important when we get to lab uh, seven, eight, and 11, okay? Uh, you might want to give better labels to these switches, like mode and up and down and mode. Again, this is my alarm clock. I can look at the bottom side here. Okay, so let's look at the bottom side uh, to see what the bottom side will look like. Oops. Yeah, look at the bottom. Bottom silk screen. Okay, that's what the bottom will look like. Uh, not that interesting, but you can see what the bottom looks like. Oh, I can put my name on here. Sure. Look at my name on both sides. Yeah, you see it's reversed. That's all right. Okay, the date, my name. All right. All right. All right. So uh, let's show you the last step, and that is to print the... Um, to print the uh, uh, the pieces of paper, all right. So in my case, I'm going to use a PDF because I'm not actually printing it. You can see what happens, but I'm going to use a PDF, uh, and then I'm going to print. I'm going to make two prints. The first is I'm going to choose the top silk, the top copper, top all the top things. Okay, all the top things, and I'm not going to rotate it or mirror image. I do want it all black, so it's easy to print. I want it 100%. That's important that it print 100%. And then I'm going to uh, show you this. I'm going to call this the top side. Okay. Put it in the right spot. Uh -huh. Top side. Okay. So this is what the top side will look like. Uh, and so you're going to print this and cut it out and put this on a piece of paper. Let's print the bottom side. Print. Okay, now this one, we want to show the stuff on the bottom. Okay, the bottom silk, the bottom copper, the bottom solder. Um, documentation is actually on the bottom. There's a documentation too. It's on the bottom. But this one we want to mirror uh, because you, you're looking through it like x-ray vision, but when you print it, you're going to rotate it on a piece of paper. Again, 100% uh, print. And then I'm going to give it a name that's uh, like bottom. Again, or print it, of course. But this lets you see what the bottom looks like. Okay. 
And so this will go on the bottom of your printed circuit board. And you can clean it up so it looks prettier if you want, but uh, basically I am done with Lab 6. All right, so in summary, what I did is I pasted my Lab 3 into the starter code. I connected it up to the single chip processor. Uh, I chose the power strategy. I used the 100 milliamp uh, uh, regulator. I added debugging features. I chose a box that would fit into my board. And then I put the parts around. This was the most fun part. And then I routed it up, making sure my power signals were 20 uh, milli inches and my signals were 8 milli inches. And then I printed the top and the printed the bottom in mirrored form. All right, now you try.